Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar Talk. So yesterday I did a special release of the live stream that happened in Sauce. But today I wanted to go a little bit deeper because um, there's a lot of information thrown at us yesterday. And I just want to go over that information with you guys. So first, we are going to go and talk about the Endless Archives. Um, the Endless Archives is the new upgrade um, that is coming in Update 40. It's going to release in console in November and then at the end of October on PC. Now, the Endless Archive is an endless dungeon, per se, that you can do solo or with a friend or companion. There's going to be leaderboards. The leaderboards are solo and duo. This is not a time-based leaderboard, though. So the leaderboard score is going to determ be determined on how long you're in there, per se, and how many like people you kill. So if you have really good DPS and you can kill quick, go through the arcs and rounds or rounds quickly, then it's going to be a better score. So it is not time though. So you can go and take your tank in there or your healer and just start pounding at stuff. Um, that doesn't matter what you play or what class you play. You can take anything in there that you want. Now, at the end of each round, you're going to get a buff for the next round that's coming in. Um, these are called verses, and they go anywhere from offensive, defensive, or utility. Um, the offensive verses are you get extra damage to, like, X skills. Defensive verses, it can be like, hey, you can't be... Um, you can't be stunned or stuff like that and then the utility verses are like hey you get more gold drops um and we saw that in the live stream the other day um that's i mean i like the gold <laughs> utility one that is uh, that was actually pretty cool because uh, there is one that you just bash the enemy and it just drops a pile of gold in the ground so it's a pretty cool thing to to see and obviously at the end of each arc you're going to get a vision now those visions is a permanent buff that you're gonna keep until you die which is you have three lives or until you choose to end your experience in these endless archives now if you're with a duo not a companion but a duo so somebody else a friend buddy wife girlfriend kid it doesn't matter who you play with but if you're in there with somebody else and they manage to pick you up if you die then you do not take a thread of life with you this is only on group wipes so if you're in there solo and you wipe then obviously that's gonna take a thread and after three threads you're pretty much have to start over but um at the end of each arc you're gonna get a vision and those visions are offensive defensive and utility as well um, so that means that you got to pick and then if you have somebody else with you, they get to pick a vision as well. Same with verses. So you could potentially kind of comp the group a little bit to like, Hey, I took an offensive, uh, verse. Um, or if you're there with a tank or a healer, they can choose to, to have a defensive, um, or offensive, you know, or utility. It doesn't matter really what they take. This is basically up to you guys and uh, up to who you play with and how you want to play this dungeon, which is probably one of the coolest things that I have uh, seen so far. This is probably one of the most exciting quarter fours that I have played in ESO in a long time. Um, so I'm really excited about this. This is not necessarily my kind of thing, but I could see how this could be very, very fun for a lot of people. Now, <laughs> I think Finn let it slip, uh, or Rich, I can't remember, a couple of months ago that there was curated sets, because they talked about this dungeon already. Um, we knew this was coming, but they didn't say anything about curated sets until it was basically dropped as a big no-no and mistake so after that obviously we knew curated sets were coming for um for the 
the uh, dungeon itself. Now these credit sets are dropped at the end of the arc. And from the secret mob that you can get, um, I believe is in arc two. And then the last bosses of every five arcs, I believe give you the, the big boss, every five arcs will give you a drop as well. Now the leader, like I said, the leaderboards, that's up to you guys. But if you decide to summon a companion or bring a friend in, that's going to automatically cue you into the duo leaderboard. So be careful with that. If you want to be a solo leaderboard humper. Um, and just kind of be careful with that as well. We did see a little scamp thing running around from the boss. That was pretty cool too. So there's going to be like little things like that um, coming about. Now, the currency system is like the Telwar system, like the AP system. So you guys are going to see, you know, s different currencies. Except with Telvar, you can't lose this uh, Endless Archive apocryphal um, I can't remember exactly what the name was. You can't lose the currency, basically. It's like AP, you can't lose AP. But with this currency, you're able to buy furnishings, you're able to buy uncurated set uh, gearboxes or curated set drops. And then there's gonna be a fragment, I believe, that's in there from the Tales of Tribute. So there's leads in this as well through the drops that uh, you can get and there's uh, specific buffs that you can get to get like a third verse or something um they we're gonna have to see it on pts but i saw a little bit of it yesterday and we're gonna have to really delve in when this comes to pts on monday um now a lot of people are like what are the sets what are the sets what are the sets here are the sets so the Dragon Knight set is called the Basalt Blood Warrior set item. Two items, 124 Magic Recov. Three items, 1164 Max Health. Four items, 124 Weapon and Spell Damage. And then when you cast an Earthen Heart ability, it grants you a Warrior buff for 20 seconds with a 20 second cooldown. On the front bar, you gain Major Minor Heroism, four ulti every one second. Uh, while on the back bar, you gain Healing Done and Damage Shield by 14%. And then when you swap bars, obviously it's gonna go between the major minor heroism to the the healing done and such. So that's a pretty cool Dragon Knight set. I can see that being used in PvP a lot. Um, a lot of these sets actually I can see being used in PvP because there is no minor slayer or uh, major slayer as well. Which unless there is a way that Sauce is bringing in. Um, I don't know another set that gives group that slayer buff then these sets are not necessarily the best in pve content um that that slayer is a pretty big deal when you're killing stuff um so i'm not even sure if it's gonna be a very good set to even take into the archives because you're beating up monsters and ads so you kind of want to have a little bit more buff towards those guys but anyways the necromancer set is called nobility and decay two items max health two, three items four percent healing taken four items max health again five items casting a bone tyrant ability while you are in combat grants you beautiful corpse you get minor protection and minor resolve for 16 seconds and then you increase your armor um, and this is every tw 20 seconds and is reduced by two seconds for each bone tyrant ability slotted. So if you have two bone tyrant ability slotted, this is reduced to 16 seconds instead of 20. So kind of think about how you're going to play that Necromancer set if you want to take this and play with this set. Now the Nightblade, this is probably one of the coolest ones in here because I see a lot of utility in this. And it can be pretty pretty nutty in pvp um it's called the soul cleaver the two items one um weapon and spell damage three items max mag four item four items is weapon and spell damage again five items while in combat with at least 20 ult which is pretty easy for a night blade to generate you strengthen your siphoning abilities at the cost of your ultimate 
So you increase the damage of your healing and siphoning abilities by 17% of your current ultimate up to 200 ultimate from a minimum of 3% to a maximum of 34%. So if you have 34%, that's pretty darn good. And then it also reduces the cost of siphoning abilities by 15%. Casting a siphoning ability drains you of 1% of your current ulti with a minimum of 1. As a Nightblade, you generate ulti pretty quickly. This can be pretty, 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 pretty bad. Um, all I have to say is this set is kind of nutty. But let's, let's go over to the Sork and Templar and the Warden sets. You have the Monolith of Storms, which is the Sork set, and that is two items, crit chance, three and four items gives you uh, spell and weapon damage, five items casting, um, dealing damage with a storm calling abilities initial hit, or every fifth hit tick is going to create um, a Monolith. And you uh, can have a monolith near the enemy for 10 seconds, up to one every one second. You will have three monolith linked to each other from 28 meters. Will each uh, will link, and each link will deal 38 17 shock damage every two seconds to enemies between and near them. Now, every two seconds is only time that an enemy can take damage. So they take damage, two seconds. They take damage, two seconds. You guys get that. Now the Templar set is the one that was highlighted in the stream. So you have one um, weapon spell damage, crit chance, weapon and spell damage. When you deal damage with the Dawn's Wrath ability, you're gonna stack the sunlight for 10 seconds once per attack. You can have 50 stacks max and gain 12 magical recovery per stack. When you're at max stacks, your Dawn's Wrath abilities deal 25% more, dam more damage and a Wrathful Nova is cast on the enemy. And you cannot refresh it, obviously. When sunlight expires at max stacks, you lose 50% of your current magicka, which is actually not that bad. This could be a good set if you pair it correctly. It's gonna take some testing, obviously. And then you have the Warder. This is actually another set that, <laughs> if used correctly, this can be pretty nutty as well in PvP. You have the Gardener of Seasons, so it's 4% healing done, mag recovery, weapon and spell damage. Casting a green balance ability gives you Herald of Spring, causing your green balance overheals to apply minor heroism for three seconds. Casting a non-green balance class ability within two seconds consumes Herald of Spring and gives you Harbinger of Fall for 10 seconds. This causes your green balance overheals to create an eight meter area for five seconds. Apply major maim to enemies and minor vitality to allies. You can create an area once every five seconds and you cannot gain Herald of Spring while Harbinger of Fall is active. So you have to wait till the cooldown, obviously. I mean, that's not too bad or anything, but it's uh, it's okay. I think it's a little bit better than people have been saying, but we'll have to kind of see how it tests out. Now the Arcanus is called Reawakened Hierophanth. Two, three, and four items will each give Max Magicka. And then five items, casting a non-ultimate curative rune form ability grants an effect for six seconds to your affected allies based on how many crux you had. One crux, they gain a damage shield, two crux, minor heroism, and three crux, major protection. So <laughs> this is actually pretty interesting because you want to make sure what you want to give to your group, whether it be a shield, minor heroism, or major protection. Um, this actually gives a support Arcanus an ability to use two or three Crux um, with the one Crux as well. Um, this is not necessarily a bad thing. It's um, It really gives the Arcanus a little bit of a, a free, like just a free play in a way. But um, we also have a new group finder and you can choose to queue for arenas, PvP, trials, dungeons, the new endless archives, pretty much anything in the game. Um, a lot of people have said they want to like queue up for role playing, and I think that is and can be a thing. Um, you can choose to queue based on CP levels, playstyle, comps, achievements that you want to 
um, like basically get with with the uh, activity I'm very excited about this this has been needed for a long long time people have been screaming for this and just the fact that we get this in quarter four of this year means that sauce is actually listening to people even though this is a little bit too late I feel like this should have been done last year but to be honest right now it's better late than never because I'm very excited I hope it doesn't break like sometimes the group finder happens to break um, but um, if this thing is like I think it is and like they've said it is and like they have explained it to me in the stream then this is gonna be pretty unstoppable because you can set up your group however you want if you don't want a tank you don't have to have a tank if you want a tank and a DPS um, combo and you don't want a healer then you can do that too it's pretty awesome actually in a way and it's gonna make things a little bit easier to queue in my opinion now the jewelry crafting is also getting a major update we're not going to have grains anymore which was one of the things that when they introduce the jewelry crafting in somerset i was like what is this with the grains thing you know like it doesn't make any sense um they've had it before with some style of materials way back in the day like i remember glass the uh, malachite i believe material you can get grains of that and 10 grains you know got you one of those but i think that was super super confusing to new players because players were like oh i'd need one plating wait so what's this grain for so it created a lot of confusion well now confusion is done because you're just gonna have platings um the grains will automatically convert whenever you get to um to do the i think it's whenever it goes to your inventory um or your craft bag or whatnot it, it will automatically convert if you have grains saved up somewhere um, now a lot of people are selling off their platings like it's a dumpster sale um, I mean I guess I could tell you to join the group um, they're dropping fast and the only thing that I could basically tell you guys to do is to just hold on to your gold jewelry till till you know this patch comes out but you're still gonna get one plating for that gold jewelry so and the grains are gonna be converted to one plating if you want to wait that's fine but um in the new patch one plating equals 10 so for every one plating you have right now they are going to give you 10 platings so if you have a hundred platings you're going to have a thousand platings after the patch um, and if you have one grain is gonna equal one plating so a hundred grains you get a hundred platings now the upgrades are gonna be a little bit different instead of the four gold chromium platings that you're used to doing you're gonna have to have eight chromium platings so it's kind of like the tempering alloy draw wax rosin conversion and just to make sure you know like think about it it's you can choose to do whatever dumpster sale you can if you feel like you need to get rid of your platings now do so but i feel like it's going to be the same as before um the plating market will drop in price don't get me wrong okay like it's going to drop but it's not gonna be like the dumpster sale that is happening right now in eso when people are freaking out um because all it is 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 gonna be the same thing after patch so please don't don't go too crazy um with the dumpster sale unless you uh you know you think that's gonna help you right now versus in the future i really do think the platings are not gonna go down like i think they might get up to like 25k per and that's where i think that's gonna be but that's just my opinion it might go lower it might be higher i would just recommend you do what you feel you need to do um as far as the player goes now one other update um well i'll show you guys um the endless archive asset is that we are going to get the crafting stations the master crafter stations 
and from my understanding is as you feed the um attunables in it goes gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you have the full master crafting station um so you're just gonna be able to feed all your crafting stations into it um i really like the fact that sauce did a good job of keeping us with the um attunables and just have it to where we feed it to these master stations because <laughs> can you believe how many people were gonna be super pissed if you tell them hey you're not gonna be used you know you, you're gonna have to get attunables again or you're gonna have to buy this or that to feed it into the attunables so it, it would have been a headache and a, and a dumpster fire so i'm really really happy that um the the sauce decided to keep the attunables so you just have to feed them into these master crafting stations now thank you guys to our boosters if you would like to boost our discord please do so we get actually uh, some cool rewards um in our discord if you decide to boost we get more space animated links um our own custom link you name it it's it's pretty awesome to to be fully boosted so if you're able to support our discord to do that then please do so and also make sure you guys subscribe to our youtube channel like we really enjoy putting out content for you guys and we would love for you guys to subscribe like and comment on our channel with what do you guys think of you know the new the new stuff that's coming out in eso um the guild whatever it, you know just get us get us over here speaking of discord this is our discord link if you guys are not part of the guild but would like to join you can always hit up a discord and get a guild invite through there or just get a guild application through the game and uh search us in the social or trading aspect and you will see us and now and now we We'll look at the Endless Archive new trailer. Okay, so you guys kind of saw saw that um, it, it is it's pretty awesome that uh, trailer is pretty freaking amazing. I'm very excited about endless archives and I am very excited about just everything that's coming out on this update 40. Um, there's a lot of cool things that are coming out and with this new quality of life update we just had is is absolutely stunning. And if you want to uh, see what quality of life um, updates and um, just kind of brainstorming we had, check our latest Cougar City podcast because our topic was what quality of life um, things we would like to see in the game. And there's a lot of cool things that we talked about. So please go on over there and I will link the video on this video so you guys can kind of see what quality of life um things we had talked about but make sure you guys like subscribe and tell your friends about this youtube channel this video anything tell us how you feel about the new endless archives dungeon how you feel about the new updates that are coming up the group finder all that sh good shenanigans and please please let us and tell us what you think and let's get this game to be a pretty cool thing. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys have a fantastic day. And I will see you guys next week.